Yes, he is so wonderful to have you here tonight, and uh, we are so honored and so blessed to have our very dear friend, one of our uh, apostles here tonight, a uh, spiritual dad to me, and just uh, we could never put into words what this man has meant to the King's House the past two and a half years. So if you will, ladies and gentlemen, put it together uh, for the one and only Frankie Powell. Thank you, Pastor Mark. Hey, give Pastor Mark a great big hand. Will you do that? Wow, it's so good to be back in McAllister, Oklahoma. Come on, somebody. At the King's house. Y'all keep on, I'm going to be looking for me a house. Come on, I'm going to have to move on over here. Amen. Man, man, man. This place is awesome. But I know it's not the building, it's you guys. Amen. Praise God. And if I've never met you, I'd love to meet you because... I tell you, this, this is my home away from home. And thank you, Pastor Mark, for just uh, allowing me to be here tonight. And man, I'm just a little overwhelmed, to be honest with you. I just really sense a God's presence in this place tonight. Amen. Wasn't the worship awesome? I mean, awesome. Come on. It always is, but it, it was awesome tonight, I'm telling you. And I've been listening uh, to Pastor Mark's uh, series, I, I listen a lot, but I listened to this whole series he just finished. What a series. What, what a preacher of the gospel. Come on, everybody. Wow. I'm, I'm just glad I wasn't here when he was wearing them boots. Come on. It, it was bad enough where I was listening to it. Come on. It's just awesome, awesome, awesome. But I'm going to have to be honest with you tonight, okay? I'm just going to be honest with you. You guys have got some incredible, incredible singers and musicians. But, but, but I, just, I just can't buy into the fact that that's why you're here. And, and I'll be honest, forgive me, worship team. But I mean, there are better professional musicians. Y'all don't get offended by that. I mean... I mean, I'm just being honest, you know. Thank you. And I mean, there's not many. There might be one or two better preachers than Pastor Mark, but that'd be all. Come on, somebody. No. That's really not it. What makes this place so different? is the presence of the Spirit of God that's in this place. What, what makes these guys better is not that they're necessarily more talented than some of the greats. It is that there's something more than talent. And it's the presence of the Holy Spirit. And what makes Pastor Mark so awesome is it's the presence of the Holy Spirit. And back, back on October the 4th, and um, I've, been, I've been praying because I'm going to be back a couple of more times in the next couple of months. But On October the 4th, about 4.30 in the morning, I was praying. It was a Sunday morning. And, and I just began inside of me where the Spirit of God lives inside of me. Where, where the Spirit of God lives inside of you. But because, because without the, the Spirit of God, there's no Christian life. You, you can't be born again. You, you can't be saved without the Spirit of God. And He lives in you, and He lives in me. And He's the difference maker. I mean, I mean, God's, you you take the, the Holy Spirit. Everybody say his name with me. Holy Spirit. Come on, say it with me. Holy Spirit. 
You, you, you take him out of this equation. And this is just a good social club where you meet friends, hand out business cards, make deals. Without him, lives can't be changed. Marriages can't be healed. Addicts can't be delivered. Wandering, aimless people could not find their purpose and destiny without Holy Spirit. Otherwise, we'd just be a mundane religious organization that, that, that actually would do just the opposite of what this place is doing in your life right now. Instead of giving you life, this place would suck the life out of you. Try, try, trying, trying to live the Christian life without the Holy Spirit in our life will beat you up and wear you out. It'll suck the life out of you. It will take your breath away. In fact, without the, without the Holy Spirit, without the Holy Spirit, people that read the Bible become mean and religious. And and the Bible becomes a book of rules, of do's and don'ts that, that are impossible for you to keep and will only murder your life. In fact, in fact, without the Holy Spirit, people who read that Bible and quote that Bible become mean and they beat you with the Bible. Any, anybody ever encountered anybody like that in their life before? I've been beat up a few times. It's kind of like Peter in the Garden of Gethsemane when he pulled out that sword and cut the guy's ear off. Without the Holy Spirit, the Bible becomes a sword in our hand, and instead of giving people something to hear, we're cutting their hearing off. In fact, in fact, I'm going to let the cat out of the bag. This, this in incredible series that Pastor Mark just preached and, and really was exciting to me. I'm, I'm telling you, it was exciting to me. It was exciting to you because I could hear you. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking if these were just church people showing up at a regular church, this message would not be exciting them. Because I need to be honest with you, as good as it was, <laughs> It's impossible without the Holy Spirit in your life. In fact, I want to tell you this. It was never intended. God, who loves us so much and sent Jesus to die for us, he never intended us to try and live for him without the Holy Spirit. He knew it would be impossible. In fact, in fact, Jesus, on the last night, he really got to spend with his disciples. And, and, and he did the Lord's Supper and, and Judas, you know, betrayed Jesus. On that night, Jesus is about to leave earth and go to heaven. He's going to die. He's going to rise from the dead. He's going to pop in and out of rooms of, for about 40 days, and then he's going to heaven. So the last good night he had to spend with his disciples, he spent three chapters in the book of John talking to them about the Holy Spirit. And one of the main things he said, and I want to read it to you out of the Amplified Bible. It, the Amplified Bible brings the original language out of the Greek in John chapter 14. And here's what Jesus said to them. He said, I will ask the Father, talking about God, and he will give you another comforter, counselor, helper, intercessor, advocate, strengthener. Everybody shout strengthener. A standby that he may remain with you forever. He said, look, I'm leaving. 
But the Holy Spirit's going to come, and he's going to live inside of you. And, and he's not going to check out on you. He's going to stay there. And he is going to be the one that strengthens you to do all this stuff that I've left for you to do. He's the strength inside of us. He said, he said I will give him to you. And, and the word in the original language when he talks about this comforter is it, a word parakleo. And, and it means to call for his help. To call for his help. In other words, he said, I never, I never expected you to try to do it on your own. I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit. And all I want you to do is just ask for his help. Because there's going to be moments when you hear messages like follower or fan where you're going to say, oh, my God, this is impossible. He says, yeah, it is for you, but not with the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life. I, I rented a car to come here. and, and uh, Well, actually, my wife rented it for me. And, and uh, it's a little Toyota Corolla. And... Uh, I left about 5.30 in the morning, and she had gotten home with it late, so I didn't have time to check it out. So I had to check it out while I was driving. <laughs> yeah, that would have been fun. You, you would have needed the Holy Spirit if you'd have been in the car with me that night. And, uh, and so I'm trying to figure it out, get my phone paired so I can use my GPS on my phone and, and you know, trying to figure out where everything is, the lights and and, and then I, I, I hit cruise control. And I have to use cruise control because when I drive, I listen to praise and worship music. And the more excited I get, the faster I drive. So I use the cruise control to keep me from paying tickets. Come on, somebody. Can I have an amen from the back back there? Come on. But, but, you know, it, it can wear you out because, because I'm going to do the speed limit, you know. And, and, and then you got those that don't want to do the speed limit. And a lot of my driving is on back roads till I get there. So, you know, you got to put your brake on. And then you got to use it manually till you get back from around them. And then you can mash the button again. And it can be a hassle. But all of a sudden I mash this button. And it had... A cruise control assist. I can, I can stay back two car lengths, four car lengths, or six car lengths. And all I do when I hit that button is I don't have to slow down. The car does it automatically. Slows down, stays four car lengths behind the car in front of me until I can get in another lane or it turns off and then it automatically goes back to my cruise control speed. I'm thinking, wow. But you see, I could turn it off and do it myself or I could hit the button and it would assist me. And that's what Jesus was saying. He said, he said, you try to do this on your own, it's going to wear you out. It's going to frustrate you. It's going to work you to death. In fact, you may be here tonight, and you've been trying. Maybe you didn't know there was an assist button. Come on, somebody. Maybe you were like me. Maybe you're new to this. Maybe you didn't get time to check it out yet. But I believe that's why God sent me here tonight to tell you he has sent you an assistant, a strengthener, a helper, somebody that will always be there at any moment. All you got to do is ask. Just ask. I get so frustrated with my kids after they became teenagers. Now, when the preteens, they didn't mind asking for my help at all. But something about 13, everything changes. And you watch them struggle and struggle and struggle. And you say, hey, you want me to help that? No, I got it. And, you, and sooner or later, you just get frustrated. Say, if you would just ask me. Just ask me. In fact, I found another button on this thing. 
And then when you mash that button, it assists you in staying between the lines. Now, now listen, you, you don't know me. Pastor Mark's ridden with me a couple of times. Anybody that would ride with me would want me to mash that button. Because, because I like to drive like this, talking. I have to look at whoever I'm talking to in the back seat. And I'm constantly on them little rub things on the side and going over the dot to dot to dot to dot to dot. I told my wife, thank God for the dots. It's like, it's like Braille for the blind for me. It keeps me. At least I know I'm still safe if I'm hearing the dots. Come on, somebody. But this assist will not let me go over either line. It pulls me back. Do you understand? I know there's some things I don't need to get out of bounds on. In my, but if I try it in myself, I'm going to constantly go dot to dot and room, room, room. But Jesus knew that. He said, I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit. He's going to help you. He's going to assist you. In fact, I want you to understand, even Jesus, the Son of God, couldn't do this thing without the presence of the Holy Spirit. If you just read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the, the, the first part of the second half of the Bible, you'll, you'll find out Jesus lived on this planet 30 years. He never preached a sermon. He never worked a miracle. He never walked on water. He never did anything. Nothing. He, he, he never fed 5,000. He never went out of his way to a well to talk to a, a woman that, that had been rejected by society five times. She had messed up marriages, living with another man, living a reckless life. He never went out of his way to help a one of them. He never stopped a woman caught in adultery from being stoned to death. He never intervened. He never changed a life. 30 years on this planet. And in the book of Luke's gospel, suddenly the Bible says he went into the Jordan River, was baptized by John. And when he was in the water being baptized in water, the Bible says the Holy Spirit came upon Jesus. And everything changed. It changed everything, even in the life of the Son of God. And then the Bible says in, in, in Luke chapter 4, look, look at this verse here. It says in Luke chapter 4, verse number 1, it says, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit. And then it says, Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit. And then you watch three and a half years. Once he began to rely on the presence of the Holy Spirit in his life, everything changed. Everything he began to ask me and you to do to follow him, he did only under the power of the Holy Spirit. And yet, and yet, so many of us know nothing about him. Don't know how to interact with him. In fact, I want to I say this to you tonight. I believe, I believe I'm on a mission. I, I believe God's on a mission. I believe King's house is on a mission. I believe God wants us to become comfortable relying on the presence of the Holy Spirit in our life. Everybody say Holy Spirit. I want you to become comfortable saying his name. In fact, in fact, we, we're very comfortable saying God or Heavenly Father. We're comfortable saying Jesus. But do you know one day Jesus was teaching in the book of Matthew chapter 12. And, 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 and he's talking about people that, that are talking against God. And, and I want you to watch what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 12, verse 32. He said, anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven. 
But anyone who speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. Now, everybody look at me. Everybody look at me. Don't get hung up on, on what he's talking about being forgiven or not forgiven. Here's what I want you to understand. That Jesus said, hey, there is someone that has a greater priority in your life than even me in your life. Now, listen to me. God is in heaven on a throne right now. Amen, everybody? God is in control. Aren't you glad God is in control? Now watch this. Do you know the Bible tells us where Jesus is? The Bible says Jesus is sitting at the right hand of God, praying for you and I right now. God the Father and Jesus are in heaven. But do you know where Holy Spirit is? He's right here in us in this room. He's the one that God wants us to depend on, to rely on, to ask for help in our life so that we can do everything God has called you and I to do. In fact, I, I have uh, OCD. Does anybody know what OCD is? If you know what it is, wave your hand so I don't, Yes. I, I have OCD, ADD, and every other D you can imagine. And, and, and before I understood what I'm talking to you about tonight, I, I, I would frustrate everybody. I stayed frustrated all the time because, because I wanted everything perfect, and it's impossible. Come on. And then... I went to a counselor one day, and that counselor said, you have OCD, and he explained to me what it was. And I went home, and I began to pray about it in my life. And as I began to pray, God just began to bring scriptures to my mind. And one of the scriptures he brought to my mind, and Blake, this wasn't on the outline, so hang with me. The New Living Translation, Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23. And I had read these, these verses. Maybe, maybe you've read them or heard them. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering. We, we translate that word patience, but I like long-suffering better because patience to me is suffering. Come on, somebody. Gentleness. Oh, kindness. Goodness, faithfulness, and self-control. Gentleness, gentleness. I can't be gentle when everything's out of order. <laughs> so I would read these verses and I would say, oh, that's what I'm supposed to be. That's what I'm supposed to be. So then I would try to be patient. <laughs> Anybody ever tried that before? But see, I, I actually think this is why sometimes we have a hard time reading the Bible. We read these things and we think we're supposed to do them. And we can't. It's impossible. It will wear you out. It will frustrate you. It will so discourage you and disappoint you because you can't do it. That's why it starts off with, watch this, everybody. But the Holy Spirit, what? What? Come on, shout at me. He produces this in your life. In other words, God's saying, I knew you couldn't do it, but this is what you need, and this is what the world needs from you. This is what will make you different. This is what will make you the light of the world. This is what will make you the salt of the earth. But you'll never do it because it's so different than everybody else. But listen to me. The Holy Spirit... He can produce this in your life if you will ask him, if you will depend on him, if you'll quit trying to do it in your own strength. He will do it. He will assist you. Now listen to me. That word spirit, that word spirit, it, it comes from the first part of the Bible, and it literally means breath. Everybody go, <sighs> and that word holy, everybody say holy, 
Boy, that's an intimidating word if you don't understand it. But it also comes from the original language. It also comes from Genesis chapter 1 verse 2. And, and it comes from a word that said moving. But in the original language, it means to brood. B-R-O-O-D. Everybody say brood. Now, I'm from the country. I, I grew up in Arkansas. And, and we used to raise hogs and chickens. And our chickens... We could have them one or two ways. We could have them as eggs, or we could let them grow, and we could have them as chicken legs. Come on, somebody. The only thing that was different living on that farm was when we got a hold of those eggs. If, if we went out every morning and checked our hen nest, we just move the hens off, get the eggs, take them in the house, crack them open. We could boil them. We could, we could scramble them. We could sunny side up them. Come on, somebody. How many, how many like eggs in this place? But if we left those eggs in that nest and we let that hen brood on them, anybody know what I'm talking about? Something supernatural happens. You know that that yellow and that and that runny yolk in, in that egg. Something begins to happen if you leave it under that hen. Supernaturally, it begins to transform in the shell of that egg. Until suddenly, it begins to form a body, and it begins to form wings. And it begins to form a beak. And it begins to form feet. Come on, somebody. Watch this. Until suddenly, supernaturally, without any intervention, what is inside that shell becomes stronger than the shell itself. And it breaks out of the shell. And what would have been an egg had we not left it under that hen became a chicken that broke out of the egg. Come on, everybody. And here's, what, here's what I want you to understand about the presence of the Holy Spirit that already lives in you. He is saying the brooding breath of God produces this in your life. And you may have an OCD nature, an ADD nature. You may not be gentle. You may not be kind. And you're trying because that's what Pastor Mark said we're supposed to be. And it's wearing you out and frustrating you. But God says if you are asking, Holy Spirit, there ain't a gentle bone in my body. I'm not patient, but you are. And I'm asking you to form within me. God promised you could produce what I can't. So let your patience and your love and your gentleness get so big inside of me that one day it busts through my nature. And instead of me throwing a hissy fit, suddenly I can handle the pressure. Everybody say Holy Spirit. There's this verse in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14. I, I want to read it to you out of the paraphrase message. The apostle Paul is talking to the church at Corinth. And he's ending his second letter with them. And he says, the amazing grace of the master Jesus Christ. Aren't you glad for the grace of God? Anybody in this room that's saved is saved by grace. It's, it's what Jesus did, not what you can do. Come on, somebody. The extravagant love of God, a God, a God who, who sin had to be paid for. Justice was demanded 
But instead of taking out his wrath on us, instead of us suffering, trying to pay for our own sin, he loved us so extravagantly. He sent his own son, took all of his wrath, all of his anger, and all the justice of our sin on his son, and Jesus paid it all. That's love. But then notice what he says. The intimate friendship. Everybody say those two words with me. The intimate friendship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. He, he, Holy Spirit, he, you know, he, he, he's not an accessory like my assist on my car. He's not an it. He's not a button I push. He's, he's God in me. Helping me when, when I ask him to. He's not going to make me do anything. But he will help me do anything I need to do to live out the purpose and the plan of God for my life. I, I, don't, know, I don't know about you. But when I begin to think of a friend, a friend is someone I build a relationship with. A friend is someone that I want to get to know. And the more I learn about them, the more I want to do things that they like. And, and the more I want them to do things that I like. Everybody say friendship. Me and my wife will be married 39 years. John's 41 years this weekend. Come on, somebody. Give him a good, good hand. Amen. 39 years. And, and we, we love doing everything together. And, and life changes. I travel and her jobs have changed. But when life changes, we just adjust. I've learned to cook this year. Come on, everybody. I cook dinner every night when I'm home. A lot of times that means microwave. But cook, cook, I cook. I want it ready when she gets there so we can spend time together. We clean house together. We wash our vehicles. Wash. We wash our vehicles together. That's, that's Alabama talk, everybody. But there's, but there's, something, there's something about my wife. I can grieve my wife. I can grieve my wife and not know when I do it, but I will know shortly after that I did it. I may not even know what I did, but I know I did because suddenly this intimate friendship, hey, babe, how are you doing? Fine. You need any help, babe? No. I mean, suddenly... I mean, any other time it'd say, oh, babe, no, I got it. You go ahead. Any other time it'd be, babe, I'm doing wonderful. Thanks for asking. But now it's fine and nope. <laughs> she gets quiet. She withdraws. How, how many guys know what I'm talking about? Go ahead and lift your hand and give me an Amen. I've, I've learned, I've learned to go over and say, babe, did, did I do something or say something? Or, or now I've learned to think for a minute and usually I can remember what I did. Because <laughs> I've learned sometimes even that griever, I just go on over and say, babe, I'm so sorry. I know I said this, I did that, I, you know. Wait, listen to me. In Ephesians chapter 4 verse 30, the Bible says we can grieve Holy Spirit in our lives. We can, we can grieve him and take for granted his influence in our life. Now let me tell you, that there's, a lot of, there's a lot of dumb things Frankie can do to grieve Laura, my wife. But let me tell you the thing that would grieve my wife the most. Is if we got in the car together and rode two or three hours and I never spoke to her the whole time. 
If I walked in the house after, after being gone all day and, and just went ahead and didn't say a word to her and just went about my business, unpacking my clothes and all that and getting everything, get a shower, go to bed. The greatest thing that would grieve my wife and any woman in here and any man is to be ignored. This person that Jesus said, you, I'm, I'm going to send him because you're going to need him. And he will help you. And he will strengthen you. And he will lead you. In fact, in fact, Jesus told us this. He said, you can't get to know me any better without getting to know him better. Because he's the one that's going to teach you about me. In other words, I can't even get closer to Jesus without getting closer to Holy Spirit in my life. And yet if we're not careful, we totally ignore him in our life. And we may wonder why he's not helping us. It's because we've ignored him. Now I know you think I forgot, so I want to take you back to October the 4th. How many of you have been waiting? That morning as I'm praying about 4.30... I didn't hear an audible voice. I didn't go into some kind of spooky trance or something. But suddenly I just began to hear this voice in my mind. And the Holy Spirit began to say, son, there are regions. This is one of them. Of this land that has come under the sway. Everybody say sway. That's a funny word. That's the word he used with me. I had to look it up. Only sway I know is this right here. Come on, somebody. But it, but it also means the rule of. Under the rule or the control of, of the spirit of God's presence. And I, I understand a little bit about him because, because I'm on this quest, because I'm hungering for him in my life. And, and so I, 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 began to, I began to just ask him, help me understand and, and, and like I say, I didn't see some vision, but it was, like, it was like I was out in the water in the ocean, about 100 yards offshore, not where the waves are crashing, not even where the waves have fully developed yet. Y'all know what I'm talking about? How many of you have ever been out there treading water, and, and the water just is rising and then falling? It's going to make a wave, and it's going to crash when it gets to the shore. But right now, it's just swelling and going. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Have you ever treaded water? Anybody ever treaded water like that before? Yeah. Well, let me tell you something about that. You may not even know this or you may know immediately. But if you just sit there and tread that water, with every time the water rises and lets you back down, what you don't know is it's brought you a little closer toward the shore. And if you just ride it and you don't fight it, it'll bring you right in. Of course, it's going to crash you when you get up to the And the Holy Spirit began to speak this to me. He said, Frankie, he said, I am moving people. I'm moving them into my purpose. I'm moving them back to their destiny. I'm moving them back to churches. I'm moving them back to cities. He said, some of them don't even know it. But I'm moving in their lives. They're getting hungry and they don't even know why. They, they are longing for more and they don't even know it's me moving in their life. In King's house, as I began to prepare for this night and praying for you, I didn't know who you'd be or who would be here, but God did. And I heard that, that still small voice inside of me again said, tell him, say, why you're really here tonight is because the Holy Spirit's moving you. He's moving you toward the things that he's been creating in you that's longing for more of God in your life. It's not the messages. It's not the music. Thank God for them. They're a part of what he uses. But it's the spirit of God's presence in your life. And he wants us to begin to ask him to move us. 
And I close with this. Stand with me all over. There's a portion of scripture in the Old Testament. Prophet Ezekiel. And, and it, it, it's a prophecy for that, that's coming one day actually in the land of Israel. But it also has a message. It's, it's, it's the mind and the heart of God. And I believe God wanted me to share this verse with you again tonight. And I, I cut some of the scriptures short, but, but this man, he said the spirit of God took him out to this area where there was water. And it says, it says he measured. Everybody say measured. He would measure so far, and then he'd say, okay, come out here. And he says, he led me through water that was ankle deep. And then he said, he measured again and measured a little bit further. And he said, come out here. And he said, when I walked in there, he said, the water was knee deep. And then he said, he measured again. And he said, come out a little further. And he said, he led me through water that was up to the waist. And then he said this right here. He said he measured again. But now it was a river because the water was deep enough to swim in. A river no one could cross. Now, you may, you may be kind of like me. I, I, I grew up, and I, I heard a lot about Holy Spirit, but, but he was an it, and it was a mystical something, and, and it was really only for Sundays. And when I, when I began to hear this, this moving in my life, he began to speak to me about following him and, and asking for his help. And learning to let him help me in every way in my everyday life. And just when I thought it's too hard and there's no way, if I would ask him, he would strengthen me to do what I never thought I could do and I never could have done on my own. And, and there's something about ankle deep, knee deep, and waist deep. I guarantee you everybody in this room has been in ankle deep water, knee deep water, waist deep water before. Whether it's in a river or on an ocean. But there's something about all three of those levels. You see, all three of those, my feet are still on the ground. Can I have an amen? All three of those, in other words, I understand this. I can feel it. I still got control of it. I, I can turn around and go back if I need to. <laughs> But there's something about that last measurement that my feet come off the ground and I'm, I'm really not in control anymore. And it's a step of faith to trust that the Spirit of God will move me into the places, into the things that God wants me to be. I told you, I believe I'm here on a mission tonight. God has a mission for the king's house. Listen to me tonight. Your pastor wouldn't have me in here if he didn't trust me. Listen to me tonight. God has a mission for this place. But I'm going to be honest with you. It's going to be impossible if you try to do it on your own. The mission he has for your life that is a part of this mission, I'm just going to be honest with you. You're never going to be able to do it if you try to keep your feet on the ground and do it yourself. I believe some of you already, I believe, the, I believe, I believe you've, been, you've been coming way farther and further. But I believe tonight God's calling us. That's a bold statement, but I'm going to tell you, I'll be 61 this month. I've been doing what I'm doing tonight for 45 years. I think I know less today than I ever have. Because I'm on a journey. And I'm telling you, I believe God is calling the people in this room. Come on out a little bit deeper. Come, come on out a little bit deeper. 
trust me. Don't be afraid. Don't, don't, don't let what you've seen or heard from somebody. Don't be afraid. Trust me. God is saying, trust me. Say, Holy Spirit, I can't if you don't. Come on, say it again. Holy Spirit, I can't if you don't. Now, I, I'm going to do something I've never done here at the King's house before, ever. But I really, I really believe it's a moment. They're going to sing. I'm fixing to go down. I won't be back up here. Because this is not about me. This is about you and Holy Spirit in your life.